morning. My name is Michael Welch, and for my NutriBusters topic for nutrition, I decided to choose that, uh, that lysine increases the finishing performance in beef cattle. The basis of this topic that lysine will in increase the efficiency and performance in beef cattle comes from kind of the idea that for the, major for the most part, large frame calves are often finished immediately after weaning. While this isn't always the case, some may go through an intermediate stage, but the majority of them go straight to a finishing ration in a feed yard. While th this is an effect effective method because at this point in their life, right after weaning, they have rapid and efficient rates of gain. However, their metabolizable protein requirements at this stage in their life may exceed the supply that is provided by their feed sources and dietary escape protein as well as microbial supply. It has been shown that supplementing with escape protein has been shown to improve feed efficiency, especially early in the feeding, period, feeding stages. Um, wet corn gluten and high moisture corn, both of which are widely used in modern finishing rations, are good examples of uh, feedstuffs with poor sources of escape protein and lysine. The trial that I'm referring to in this presentation was conducted at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in their animal science department. It was conducted with, is a completely randomized trial with 60 steers that av averaged 522 pounds when the trial started. The trial showed or included nine incremental levels of rumen protected lysine and methionine in order to show at which stage of lysine results kind of peaked off or what was the most economical amount of lysine to increase performance. There's also methionine control to determine if any of this response, in fact, was due to lysine or if it was just the combination methionine lysine in the trial. In order to, a, a key part of this was that the lysine and methionine were rumen protected and the way that was done is they were in a pH sensitive coating that allowed them to pass through the rumen due to the coating being stable at around 5.4 pH, which is comparable to rumen pH. But once they entered the abomasum, that is when the coating broke down and was digestible. The results of this study were kind of measured in two different segments because the metabolizable lysine and pro protein requirements in feed feeder cattle kind of declines as body weight increases as well as level of fattening. So there was a, the first 56 days was recorded and then the remainder of the trial up to 161 days. Um, for the full length of the trial overall, there were no noticeable effects, but the most significant advantage was in that first 56 day period where there was a considerable increase in, or a considerably noticeable increase in average daily gain, feed efficiency, and feed to gain. The main, or the highlight of the trial was the three and four grams per day treatment showed the most significant increase over the control group, where in the first 56 days, the three and four grams per day lysine had 16 kilogram advantage over the control, and that carried through to the end of the trial with a 32 kilogram advantage over those control animals. So in conclusion, in most finishing situations, amino acids and proteins that reach the small intestine may be deficient in metabolizable lysine. And it has been shown that by adding rumen protected lysine allows this lysine to make it through the rumen into the small intestine to be more readily absorbed into the animal system. This adding the lysine to a corn based diet, early average daily gain can be increased in feeder steers. So based on my findings, I feel that there is a place for supplementing with metabolizable lysine, but as is with all situations and conditions, results can vary based on your feed or your animal condition.